Yeah, there's no way I'm going to stay in this box. I like to move around a lot, so forgive me. But uh, I did want to say one thing, man. I don't care what Frank says about how he's not an artist. That mustache is a work of art. I never have mustache envy, and I totally do right now. I totally, totally have mustache envy. I'm used to, like, having the cool mustache. So thanks, Frank. That's cool. But, uh, yeah, I am uh, Chris McGilbray. I have uh, Six Finger Films. It is a uh, film production company here in town. I do all different kinds of fun little uh, video and film projects and that kind of thing. And uh, I don't know. I was just thinking about this idea of what it means to be a non-starving artist. And so, you know, I guess uh, I always knew I wanted to be a filmmaker. You know, I've known I wanted to be a filmmaker since I was about 10 years old. I was that kid that, you know, happiest I ever was was when I was sitting in front of the television watching a film, and I would just watch films over and over and over again. I was just so engrossed by them. And uh, by the time I got to, to high school, I started to watch the ones that I loved and literally, you know, watch them 80 times. And I would, like, turn off the sound sometimes, and I would start to, you know, just focus on the imagery, just the, the way that the, you know, the imagery is being edited, the, the different lenses that are being used, all that kind of stuff. And so um, I went to college. I went to USC, a uh, film school there, and I was like, hey, I'm going to be a narrative filmmaker. It'll be great. You know, I'll get to go to college, and uh, I'll come up with some awesome script, and it'll just automatically, like, you know, get made. And lo and behold, that didn't really happen. That's pretty unrealistic for anybody who knows anything about the, uh, the film industry. One of the, the big issues I had was I grew up in Los Gatos, and uh, I didn't really know very much about the world. I was pretty sheltered, you know. And so, like, I got there, and I was like, oh, I don't have anything to say, so what am I even going to write? So, uh, you know, one of the first things I had to do was drop out of film school and uh, go and actually get uh, some life experience to find some things to, to talk about, you know? So I uh, did some foreign travel, you know, went to Central America, backpacked around for a while, got uh, some very, very cool experiences out of that, and then uh, Went back to college, ended up studying linguistics, um, actually here at UC Santa Cruz, mostly because I wanted uh, an opportunity to go and live in Barcelona for a year. So I got to go and live in Barcelona and study at the University of Barcelona, which was also really, really fun. And the whole time I was still holding on to this dream of, okay, I'm going to be a filmmaker and I'm going to you know, figure out how to do this and make a living doing it. And um, you know, it took me a couple years. I got into the workforce. I was a project manager to you know, water conservation company. And um, I started to actually, in my free time, make narrative um, short films. And at the time, I was super into the language of cinema. So I would like, you know, literally sit down and focus on, you know, exactly what every shot is supposed to look like. And so the very first film I made was um, a, it was a Western. And it was like an existential Western. I like to say it's like Sergio Leone meets Andre Tarkovsky, which I don't know. It's, I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I thought it was fun at the time. I still think it's kind of cool. But one of the things that I learned was that I like, I sat down and I pre-visualized everything because I wanted it to be perfect. And like I timed all the shots and I knew exactly what I was trying to do before I ever got on set. And then I got on set and I had to work with actors. And it was like, dude, those are real people. And those people, like, I can't just be like, no, you're supposed to do it like I, you know, I'm doing it in my head. It doesn't work. Because then it looks like they're obviously trying to do exactly, you know, what I'm trying to get them to do. And so it looks really, really stiff and weird. And so I ended up with this thing where it was like a cool looking film. I mean, visually, it was really, really strong, I think. But like, nobody knew, I mean, the, the acting was a little weird. So I learned a really interesting lesson about artistry that I hold, you know, really, really true to today, which is adaptability. You have to constantly be able to adapt, and you have to constantly also be able to collaborate as well. So, um, you know, I made a couple other short films that were narrative, uh, narrative films, and then, um, you know, I decided that uh, I really wanted to get into, you know, industrials and uh, start making corporate videos, and so I found another filmmaker up in San Francisco. And we uh, started this company together, Six Finger Films. And what we found was that one of the things that there was a lot of work for was documentary style profile pieces, which is kind of interesting because it's, you know, not what I came from. 
I came from dreaming and thinking about narrative films, which are very, very structured. They're pre-visualized. Usually you have a pretty decent budget, so you get to control everything from the space to what people wear to who's there to you know exactly what the cinematography looks like to all the lighting. Everything is you know preordained, and so in documentaries, it's mostly about you know literally getting there and uh, capturing the experience. And so again, I've had to find my way into this adaptability so that uh, a large part of what I do now is I find that I show up at a space and I get to make a film out of that given space and out of the, the given context of what's actually there in you know, a three hour period, which is kind of crazy because you know, you had, usually you have you know, months, years to be able to come up with a feature length film. When you do it in the corporate space, you have a couple hours, man. And you better come up with something and then you better be able to, you know, spend a lot of time editing it to be able to make the pieces come together. And so, I don't know, you know, to me, being a non-starving artist and really making a living doing this, I think adaptability is kind of the, the strongest suit to, to lead with. So, thank you guys so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Thank you, sir.